everyone. Come Good on morning, in. Good morning, everybody. And let's give God a hand clap of praise. Hey, he's deserving of all of your praise. Hallelujah. Yes, he is. So we celebrated Christmas on yesterday. Yes, we Hallelujah. Did. But it should not just be a one-time event. We need to keep the celebration of what God did through his son, Jesus Christ, yes. all throughout the year. Yes. Pastor Kofi is on fire. Mm. Hallelujah for the Lord. I'm on fire. Hallelujah to Jesus for the Lord. And we hope that you are on fire yes. for the risen King. Yes. Hallelujah, Hallelujah for Jesus who came in the form of a baby. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And for all that he did on the cross. Come on, Pat. So welcome to Inspired Life Ministries. Mm. We are glad that you are here. We mm. hope that you had a wonderful um, celebration with family, friends, or even if you was just quiet. Yes. Whatever your day brought, we hope that it was something that was memorable for you. And filled with the presence of Christ. Yes, absolutely. God bless you. Let's get ready to get into and go into the Word of God. Hey, I'm Pastor Kofi Bryant Sr. This is my lovely wife. My bride and co-host, Pastor Lachelle Bryant. Thank you, Pastor Coach. Inspire Life Ministries is who we are, encouraging you to do what God called you to do and complete every assignment. assignment. Well, listen, guys, as she just said, I am super excited. Mm -hmm. And the reason I'm super excited this morning is that we get to finale or bring finale or finalize the Christmas story of the undercover boss. Yes. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. Right off the cuff, my energy is going to be pretty high <laughs> this morning. And here's why. I feel like, no, I'm not James Brown, but I do feel good. But I feel like I have to give some news to you. Uh, much like maybe my friend Ed McMahon, when he was doing Publishers Clearing House, Felt when he was coming to a house to knock on the door and tell a senior citizen or a senior that, hey, here's your $23 million. You follow me? Yes, yeah. How would you feel if you had some information that would set someone free that you loved? And all of their life, they were bound, Pastor. Mm. They were locked up in the prison of their mind on a situation. They held their head down and they were such in a uh, sad array. Every day they're sad. Every week they're sad. Every month they have a story that's negative and it's and it's it, and it's not uh, let me say, they're not encouraged. Amen? Amen? And you have to hear them day after day, week after week, and month after month being dissatisfied, and now God gives you an answer for them so yeah, they cannot be the way that they were acting on that subject yes, anymore. Thank you, Jesus. That's how I feel this morning. Mm. Because I understand where I'm going. Amen. And I want you to stay tuned this morning. So that you too can be excited about what God is doing in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Turn with me to John chapter 1. John chapter 1. We're going to begin reading at verse number 14. I'm reading from the New Testament from the New King James translation. And the word of God reads, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, mm. and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. See, the undercover boss Christmas story, mm -hmm. boss number one, we dealt with the subject of understanding that he came for us. Yes. See, he came God. for us. You just read it, right? Yes. Read that one more time, that beginning part. And the word became flesh. Stop right there. And the word became flesh. Yes. God himself became flesh. I don't think we're getting that. <laughs> God himself, creator of heaven and earth. And everything in the earth. And every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. That God became flesh to us. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why did he do that? Keep reading. So listen. And boss number two. Undercover boss number two. A Christmas story. We talk from Matthew chapter one. 
verse number 17. And we discovered that all the way in Matthew chapter 1, it gave the genealogy of Jesus Christ. Yes. Mm. And so when it gave us the genealogy of Jesus Christ, it opened up a door for us, yes. Pastor. Yes. It yes. helped us to understand something. That not only did he take 42 generations Come on. to bring Jesus here, but it helped us to understand that along the way mm. of that 42 generations, we ran across members of that generation like Abraham. Yes. We ran across Isaac. Yes. We ran across Jacob. Yes. We ran across Jacob's sons, Judah. Yeah. And people like Joseph, right? Yeah, yeah. And then Moses came after that. We ran across some members of the family yeah. that let us know exactly what God was up to. Hallelujah. What was God up to? Matthew chapter 1, verse 17. And the word of God reads, So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. From David unto the captivity in Babylon are 14 generations. And from the captivity in Babylon until the Christ are 14 generations. So that's 42 generations. If you need some math, that's 1,600, that's 1,260 years. 1,260 years that God took to bring Jesus from who? Abraham to David. David from David to Jesus. To Jesus, that's right. My point is this. We discovered in boss number two that he understood how it was to be us because yeah. he's been dealing with us for over a thousand years. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. Within that thousand years, Abraham called on. Within that thousands of years, Moses called on him. You follow what I'm yes. saying? Jeremiah called on him. And every one of them had something to call on him for. Yes. Much like you. You have something to call on God for. Yes, Amen. And he's been him. there for you. Yes. Where we discovered he was there for them. And yes. that's what, what the excitement was all about. Because we discovered that he could be feel, he could be touched excuse me, with the feelings of our, our infirmity. infirmity. Yes. And we discovered that he can be touched with the feelings of our infirmity because he felt them with us. Yes. Every time that there was discomfort with betrayal, he felt it with us. Yes. You see what I'm saying? Yes, Every sir. time there was victory, he felt it what? With, with us. us. Every time there was sadness and decay and chaos all around and we cried out to God, he Felt it with, with us. us. And that is the God that Hallelujah. we have. He tends to feel things with us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then we went to boss number three. Yeah. In boss number three, we discovered that there was an assassination attempt on Jesus the Christ. Turn to Matthew chapter 2, verse 16. And the word of God reads, Then Herod, when he saw that he was deceived by the wise men, was exceedingly angry, and he sent forth and put to death all the male children who were in Bethlehem and in all its district from the two years old and under, according to the time which he had determined from the wise men. Mm, mm, mm. So here we find a current king yeah. wanting to assassinate a coming King. Hallelujah. And you told us an infant. And he was a baby. Yeah. <laughs> huh? A current king, let us see. Scared of a coming king, let us see. Current and coming. Who came as an infant. Ain't that something? And yeah. came as a baby. We discovered that Herod, king, strong Herod, king of all these jur jur jurisdictions, pardon me, Bethlehem included, Judea included, right? Yes. All the providences of Rome and things like that. That's what they were in charge of. And they were scared of a what? Baby. baby. Mm -hmm. And they were scared of a baby because that baby would smack his face. Baby, in Micah 5 and 5, it talks about a prophecy of a, of a prophet being born from that area of Bethlehem. And that prophet would smack his face. Mm. So we discovered that Herod was trying to avoid getting his face <laughs> smacked. He heard of the prophecy that would be coming of a prophet coming from that jurisdiction that would do what? 
slap his face. Yeah, now, do you really think it means slap his face, or does it mean dethrone him from his current power? Dethrone him. So he was scared of what was going to happen to him. Yeah. And so he wanted to put an assassination of Jesus Christ into play. Yes. You follow me? Yes. yes. But God is good. Hallelujah. Herod died before that could happen. Mm -hmm. Some children did die, by the way, but not Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen. And so we discovered that our lives have been attempted or our lives have had assassination attempts yes. on them. Yeah, See, absolutely. God knows and now you know what you're supposed to do in life. Mm, thank you, Jesus. And if you don't know, go back and look at the messages we have on purpose and discovering your assignment. Yes. Amen? Where we dealt with assignment. Amen? Yes. Yes. All right. Discovery, assignment, creativity, yes. and obedience. Yes. That's what you're to look up. Amen? Amen. But we discovered, for those of us who remember, who we are, and now we know that he tried to assassinate us before we could even get out the gate. Yeah. He tried to stop you, men of God, mm. from speaking to men of God. Mm. He tried to stop you, woman of God. Huh? He tried to stop you from speaking to the women of God. That's right. He tried to stop you from speaking destiny into others' lives. That's right. And the reason why he did that is because they will be got destiny, mm. and they will be got destiny, and so on, That's and good. so on. Yeah. See, you had destiny in your mouth for someone. Now, what do you think they now have in their mouth? Yes, thank you. Amen. Lord. The ability to set others free. Yes, hallelujah. The devil does not want that, so he attempts to assassinate your character. Yes, he does. The Bible says he is a what? An accuser of, of the, the brethren. brethren. That's right. So every time you do something wrong, he slips away to God and says, see your servant so-and-so? Mm. Look at what he or she is doing. And she or he calls themselves a Christian. Christian. <laughs> they call themselves a prophet. Oh, look at your apostle. He's down there doing that. You follow what I'm saying? Yes. He's an accuser of the brethren. That's okay. He attempts to assassinate your character. Yeah. But God looks upon you and sees the blood. Hallelujah. I said God looks upon Thank you, you and God. he sees the blood. Thank you, Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. The oncoming king that yeah. we were just Hallelujah. talking about. Yeah. That blood, he sees it and he passes by you, your Lord. thoughts and your sins. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. He can be touched with the feelings of your infirmity because he is stopping the assassination attempt on your life. Thank you, Jesus. To get you to bring life. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I want to finalize this story. Boss number four. Mm. Hmm, 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 hmm. My Lord, this I'm going to call this the employment. You see, when we draw our eyes to Matthew chapter 8, 28, and if we begin reading at verse number 18, I want to tell you what has now transpired. And why Matthew 28 is so potent and powerful. Yeah, See, is. the baby Jesus that Herod was scared of, he actually grew up. And when he was 12, he was preaching in the synagogue. That's like the church. And they said, how is it that he knows this information? Yeah. And then he said to them, when they were worried about where he was, he says, excuse me, mother and father, did you not know I would be about my father's, father's business? business? Yes. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> Some of you need to be about your father's business. Hallelujah. Yes, and you can be young Thank at your you. father's business. Because I just pointed out he was 12. Thank doing you. his what? Father's business. business. Hallelujah. And so he grew up and he decided that he would uh, talk to a man named Simon, Peter, and he would call him away from his fishing boat for one second yeah. to get doctrine and understanding so that Simon Peter can be the preacher that he was supposed to be. Yeah. Or he stopped by and got James 
And he said, you know what? I think I want Andrew. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I love the character Matthew. Yeah, come and on, I need Christ. to be healed, so let me get the physician Luke. Hallelujah. And he's decided to get them come and on. bring them into his Good home, word. right? And he <laughs> did that, and those were how many? Twelve. Twelve. Oh, of course, everybody's got haters. He had one amongst the twelve. Mm. Did him in, did him wrong, and now he's about to be crucified. Yes, you and I also have Judas's in our lives. Amen. I said Judas. You may call him Jerry. I said Judas, but you may call her Sarah. I'm telling you, we have Judas's in our lives. Thank you. And they come with the plan of the devil to assassinate your character. Mm. But I tell you this day, he already knew that one among me has been the betrayer. Yeah. And so you need to understand come that on. you will have people against you Thank that you will Lord. come and kiss you on the cheek. <laughs> and they will come point you out to the devil. Just when you get pumped up, just when you get friction, just when you get some friction mm. to your steps and you're starting to move and you're starting to be successful, on, he will send somebody and kiss you. Mwah. This is who you need to come get. He's too on fire. I don't need that kind of press. My Lord. I'm the one that's supposed to be shining here, and here he or she is taking my glory. Hallelujah. Let me come kiss them and show you who they are. Mm -hmm. And I want you to come and get them and crucify them. Mm -hmm. Amen? And so, thanks be to God Hallelujah. that your blood of Jesus Christ will keep you from Thank the you instant Jesus. death that you receive or that you are supposed to receive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when they come point mm -hmm. you out to assassinate your character, you can walk up to them and say what we said in boss number three, I mean number two, thou sayest. Mm -mm -mm. When they come talking that trash to you, you say what? Thou sayest. When they come telling you who you're not, always trying to tell you who you are, and they don't even know who they are. Mm -hmm. How did they get the boss of you? Hmm? How are they able to tell you? So when they come accusing you, you just say, thou sayest. Hallelujah. So that scenario played out, and then they crucified our Lord. Now, when they crucified our Lord, before that happened, Pastor, in Matthew 28, I want you to read what Jesus is saying in Matthew chapter 28, because I want them to understand, them meaning our family, I want them to understand. That the baby Jesus, Hallelujah. that the God that could be touched with the feelings of our infirmity, because he came down here to live with us. The God that embossed too, we discovered that would be with us yeah. along the way to help us get through our challenges. And the boss that would be with us Thank during our Lord. assassination attempts upon our lives would grow up. To be that King Jesus uh, that Herod yeah. was scared of. Yes, thank and you now God. in this particular chapter, when he has done his due, when he has done what he has came to do, he said in Matthew Thanks, chapter 28, he said in 18, he said what, baby? He and, said, and, and Jesus, Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Oh, hallelujah. He said, all power, mm. all power has been given unto me. So I all submit authority. unto you that he is no longer the undercover boss. Hallelujah. He came back on the scene and said, now it's time for me to explain Expose who I am. Yes. I am the God of Abraham, yes. Isaac, and Jacob. Yes. Huh? And I come in the form of Jesus Christ. Christ. Hallelujah. Where am I from? From Nazareth. Yeah. Hallelujah. Can anything I am the good anointed one. Jesus Christ. Can anything good come out of your neighborhood? Hallelujah. Of course it can. You, you came Hallelujah. out of the neighborhood. Amen. Yes. And so now he says, all power has been given unto me. All authority. That's All right. authority. Now I am that king you yeah. were scared of, Harry. And here's what I'm going to do. See, a boss 
needs employees. Mm. I'm bringing it to a close. A boss needs a company to work for. Mm. In our case, we are working for Jehovah God. Huh? Our provider. Yeah. How does he provide? Saint of God, he provides using your gift mm. that he gave you of the giver. Yeah, mm. Thank, mm. You, Lord. thank you, Lord. How does he heal you? You ask, Pastor. He heals you by touching the doctor's hand mm. and becoming your healer. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. He oh, provides right for you, you not Santa Claus, but he provides for you. So he is your Jehovah Jireh. Yes. You follow what yes. I'm saying? Anyway, he gave some gifts unto men. See, one thing that I noticed that in John, I mean, uh, Matthew 28, is it led me to John 14. Yeah. So read John 14 to me. Verse 6. Yes, please. It says, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He grew up. He is now king. And he's saying, all power has been given unto who? Me. Yes, and sir. also he's saying, and as a matter of fact, Muslim, any other religion that is not me, mm. they must come through me. Hallelujah. That's what Jesus is saying right there. Hallelujah. I'm not picking on the mood. I'm just trying to mention one that I knew that was adverse Christian. I'm saying to you that every knee shall bow. And every tongue, and every tongue shall confess, confess that, Jesus that Jesus is, is Lord. Lord. And that's what he's saying in John 14. He said, no man can come unto the Father but by me. Do you get that? Yeah. Yes. Says, and so, the way, the truth. and the what? Truth. And the light. And the light, I'm sorry. Yes. And so I'm saying to you, this is such a hard story to, but it's to crunch on, okay? To, to rush, but, but check this out with me here. Jesus, when he died, the Bible tells us, as a matter of fact, I'll tell you what it tells us. Let's go there. Ephesians chapter number four. We're going to begin reading at number seven. But what I want to tell you is, when Judas kissed him, and he was pointed out and given to the soldiers, and the soldiers spat on him and beat him, and the soldiers hit him and mocked him, and when they had him to carry his own cross, and the black man Simon came to help him lift that cross to Calvary. Once he got on Calvary, he allowed himself to get up on the cross. Yeah. He allowed himself to be poked Obedience. in the side. Yeah. He allowed the crown of, uh, crown of thorns to be placed on his head. He allowed the yes. mocking, if you are God, bring yourself down. Yes. He, um, he saw all of that, had time to go through the pain he went through mm. and tell a person next to him, today you will live with me in paradise. Mm. And before he did that, he made sure that he asked, Father, forgive all Hallelujah. of them. For they, for they know not what, what they do. Hallelujah. And the Bible says he gave up the ghost. Yes. But here's the good news of giving up the ghost. Is when Jesus gave up his ghost, he became all powerful. See, that's Jesus. where Matthew 28 comes in. When he gave up the ghost, the Holy Spirit is reigning, the third person in the Godhead, because Jesus said, I'm going to leave you not comfortless. Uh, I'm going to give comforter. you a comforter. Hallelujah. And it's going to be the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And when you get the Holy Ghost, you're going to be able to do some things that you weren't able to do without the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And so when Jesus died, he did not die the way that you think he died. He died with victory. Yes. He died with victory. Yes, he See, did. his death had no sting to it. Hallelujah. Because the death that Christ received was the victory that you and I now walk in. Hallelujah. Thank you, Almighty God. Because he died, you and I are free. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. So he went down to hell, and he had that conversation with the enemy, that struggle with the enemy. And the Bible tells us that he took the keys from the enemy. Amen. And upon him coming up, he took Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, David. He took them all. And it says he led the captivity captive. My Lord, my Lord. He got them from where they were 
and is taking them to where he's going. Hallelujah. And while he's on the way up, he stops past this little sack called earth and stops off and drops off a gift. The Bible says he gave gifts Hallelujah. unto men. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. He gave gifts to men. Thank you. Oh, read Ephesians Thank chapter you, 4, verse 7. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And it reads, but to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Hmm. Now, is this, I'm looking for, a, yes, continuation. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Stop right there. Yeah. He did what? Led who? Captivity. Captive. Captive. Yes. Who I just talked about. He led them and he did what? Gave what? Gifts. To, to men. men. Mm -hmm. Ah, keep reading. Now, now this he ascended. What does it mean? But that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth. Ten. He who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave. You want me to continue? Yes, keep going. And he gave him. And he himself gave some to the apostles, some prophets. Say that slow. Yes, sir. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. Hallelujah. Stop there. Yes. He gave gifts to men. You heard that? Yes, sir. So he was leading captivity captive along the way, along his victory journey. Yeah. He gave us the power that he had. Yeah. Do you realize you have the power of God in you? Yeah. Do you realize what that's saying? Let me clarify. Not only did he leave all power, or all power be with him in his hand, but he says, as he was going up to heaven to sit at the right hand of God the Father, he stopped off and gave gifts unto men. Mm -hmm. The reason why he gave you these gifts is for you to communicate his reign, yes. his coming reign yes. in the earth and yes. on the earth and over the earth. Yes. Amen. Yes. He said he gave apostles. He gave some prophets, he gave some evangelists, and he gave some pastors and, and teachers. teachers. Yeah. He did this mm. for the working of the ministry, Hallelujah. for the perfecting of Hallelujah. the saints. Yes. So we all come into the unity of the faith. Hallelujah. Oh God. Good word, Pastor. I am explaining to you your employment. Hallelujah. I'm saying to you that the boss who came undercover for a while, mm. wrapped in flesh like you and I, came down and showed us a road map. Thank you, Jesus. On what to do and how to do it. Yes. I mean, if you needed someone to teach you, turn to Matthew. Good word. If you needed to understand how to act, go to Acts. If you need to understand how you want to conduct yourself as a believer, go talk to James. See, he put it in his word. <laughs> Mm. He came down and put his word in them, and they put some word in us. Yeah. Oh, my, my, my. And so I'm explaining to you, you that he became or showed himself as the boss. Yeah. And he put you and I under employment. Thank you, Lord. The Bible says he gave some prophets. He gave some. So let me explain the finality of this undercover boss. Yes. The employment has the apostle in it. Now, the apostle is like the district manager, the one who God speaks to, and they are able to place churches and erect buildings and set forth GPS or guaranteed uh, position system. You know what I mean? They place you somewhere in a church or in a jurisdiction to preach the gospel. That's like a district manager in Come your on, secular Sorry. employment. And so that secular employment, for those of you all who are not all into the church, I understand that. But you understand what a district manager is. Yeah, they travel right. all over the place. They fire. They hire people. You follow me? Yeah. Then he gave some prophets. Woo! I call the prophets of the body of Christ editors because they take what the mouth of God says yeah. and they tell you what God says. Yeah. And so some of you all are like editors. 
somebody's around you talking and you say, uh uh uh, that's not the correct uh, pronunciation. It <laughs> means this. They're editors in the body. They hear exactly what God says and they give you what God says. Or there's the evangelist, yeah. right? Some of you all are evangelists. I call the evangelists like the, the media department. Mm -hmm. they, they're like the, the, they're part of the human resources department. They go around and let everybody know what Christ did, yeah. what God's saying, yeah. and they keep it moving. Yeah. Yeah. You follow what I'm yes. saying? Yes. They like That's a media. Good. They put the media out there. Yeah. Yeah. They put the word yeah. out there. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Yes. Hey, Jesus is coming back. You follow me? Yes. Hey, vote for this person. You follow what I'm yes. saying? Yes. And then we have the pastors. See, the pastors are like the human resource department. Uh, human resources has inside of it, if you go to your human resources department where you work, they have a guideline, code of conduct. How you should act on the job. Mm. How the job should pay you. What the pay scale is. What the pay rate is. What the dress code is. The pastor is the one that explains the word of God mm. to the workers of God so that we can go out and do the work, work of, of God. God. Hallelujah. 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 And then you have the teachers. Those are the corporate trainers in the, in the secular world. They, they teach you how to do and how to win and how to do this strategy to get ahead. Yes. This is what the teacher does to the body of Christ. Yeah. They give us the word of God and they make the word of God clear. And understandable Thank so Jesus. that we can go and do what he called us to do. Yes. People of God, family of God, I thank mm -hmm. you for your attention. Because I wanted to point out this one thing. That the undercover boss, that the Christmas story was wrapped up in a package. Where in the end, after you receive this package, yes. you are now totally empowered by the Spirit of a living God. Yes. You are now impacted and packaged and ratified and ready to go with the gifts that God gave you Hallelujah. to bring some to him. Hallelujah. People of God, I'm talking about the undercover boss, Jesus Christ, putting you to work. Thank are you Jesus. an apostle? Are you a district manager? Are you a prophet? Are you like an editor? Are you like an evangelist? Like the media department? Are you like the pastor who's the human resources? Or are you like the teacher? Hallelujah. The teacher, which is the corporate trainer. Yeah. The premise is this. God has you so he can have them. Yeah, thank you. God has you so he can have them. He has you, pastor, so that he can be, they can, you can explain it to them and he can have them. He has you, apostle. He has you prophet. And so be encouraged this morning that God has chosen you. Hallelujah. That's the good news I came to give you. Yes. That you're now free of what had you bound Hallelujah. because now you're about to walk in your employment. Hallelujah. God has chosen you. So you go do what God has chosen you to do. Yes. Say prayers with me right now. Thank you, Jesus. Repeat this prayer. Say, Jesus. Jesus. I am. I am employed, employed by you. By you. You are, you are my, boss. my boss. And I, and I am, glad am glad to be employed, to be employed by, the kingdom by the kingdom of God. Of God. I, I say your name. Michelle. Ask you, Ask you Jesus, Jesus into my life. Jesus. Save me and put me to work. In Jesus' name, In Jesus name. I, pray. I pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah to the Lord our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you. Of this series, The Christmas Story of an Undercover Boss. I pray it's been enriching to you. I pray it's been enlightening to you. And most of all, I pray you've been inspired. Yeah. Pick up that word of God. Read about the word of God and find out if the stories we just went through are true. Amen. Amen. Hey, go fulfill God's destiny for your life. Be encouraged by what Christ did. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor, you're for such a beautiful message. I love you. And we love you. But more importantly, God, God loves you. you. See you later. Peace.